Hello and welcome back to Joe's Math Tools. In our session today, we're solving another algebraic equation involving fractions. And if you're ready, let's get started. In our equation today, we're going to begin by first finding our LCD. So remember that whenever you're working out questions with fractions and we're adding or subtracting, remember that we're still going to apply the same rules that we did with our basic fractional questions. Because our denominators are different, we're going to first have to find our LCD of 3 and 4. And when looking at our 3 and 4 timetable, the multiple that they both have in common is 12. So now we're going to be changing our fractions to their equivalent form where all of them have a denominator of 12. Now for this part of the question, I'm going to be working out these different parts on the side. That's so if we have persons who are following along with us who do not know how to find the equivalent fraction when we have algebraic expressions involved, hopefully working that on the side will help you to be able to follow along a little bit better. So let's begin with our first term, which is 6i plus 1 all over 3. Now remember that we need to change it to its equivalent form where it has a denominator of 12. Okay, so when looking at my number 3, I'm looking for that number that when I multiply 3 to it, it's going to give me 12. And 4 is the number that comes to mind. Because I know that 3 times 4 will equal to 12 which means that I now have to multiply everything in my numerator by 4 as well. Remember that whatever you multiply the denominator by, the numerator has to also be multiplied by that exact same number. So 4 times 6i will equal to 24i, and 4 times 1 will equal to plus 4. So now we're putting back our 24i plus Okay, so now let's look at our next term, which is my 5i minus 2 all over 4. And with our 5i, we're also taking that minus sign in front of it with this term as well. So do not leave off the sign that's in front. So because my first term was positive, I didn't have to worry about bringing the sign because we know that positive times positive would still equal the same thing but because there is a minus or the negative sign in front of this term I'm also going to take that along with the term that's so that when I apply my distribution with my 3 I'm also going to apply that minus sign along with it so that I can just apply two steps in one okay so we know that 4 times 3 is equal to 12 so that means our entire term in our numerator will also be multiplied to 3 and I'm also going to use this minus sign with the 3 as well. So negative 3 times 5i will equal to negative 15i and negative 3 times negative 2 will equal to negative, sorry, will equal to positive 6. Okay, so let's substitute that back into our equation. So we have negative 15i plus 6 and now we're going to change our last term as well. Okay, so for our last term, we have 5 fourths. And we also have to change that to the denominator of 12. And we know that 4 times 3 is 12. So 5 times 3 will equal to 15. So our equation is equal to 15. Okay, so now that everything has a denominator of 12, we're now going to get rid of our denominator of 12 and just work these terms out without a denominator. So that's the good thing about finding your LCD. It helps you to now eliminate that denominator and work our fractions out as usual. So now let's collect our like terms together. So we have 24i minus 15i remember you always move your term with the sign that's in front of it plus my 4 plus 6 all equal to 15. so 24i minus 15i will equal to 9i 4 plus 6 is equal to 10 
and remember that for my persons who may be a little more advanced with algebra you probably won't have to do all of these steps but I'm just doing these steps in case you know always for my persons who may not be familiar or who may be struggling with this topic so that they will be able to follow me step by step and understand where I'm getting my answers from or where I'm getting my previous answers from in my steps. So for my people who are more advanced in algebra, you know that we can skip through all of this collecting like terms and just work the terms of where they are and then move everything to the other side of our equal sign. But again, so they'll be able to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing and where I'm getting the steps from in my equation. Okay, so now we're going to move that 10 to the right hand side of our equation. I remember because it's added here, we're going to subtract it on the next side. So we have our 9i, 15 minus 10 is equal to 5. And we're now going to be dividing both sides of our equation by 9. My 9s on the left hand side would cancel and my i will be equal to 5 ninths. Let's check our answer. So if i is equal to 5 ninths, that means that everywhere in our equation where our i appears, we are now replacing that with 5 ninths. So let's do our substitution first and then we will begin the good part of solving to see if this answer indeed makes our equation valid. Okay, so now let's start our multiplication in our numerator and I want you to remember in case you may not be familiar, we are multiplying our 6 in our first set of multiplication with 6 times 5 9 remember that the 6 is being multiplied to our 5 and not to the 9 or to both remember that 6 times 5 9 is the same thing as saying 6 over 1 times 5 over 9 and we know that numerator times numerator will equal to 30 and 1 times 9 will equal to 9. So this is why our numbers are multiplied to the numerator only and not both or to the denominator. So my 6 times 5 will be 30 ninths plus 1 all over 3 minus 5 times 5 will equal to 25 ninths minus 2 all over 4 equal to 5 quarts okay so now at this point we're going to use our lcd again and we're looking for the lcd of three and four and in our first session or the first part of our video we found out that that was 12 so again we're changing everything to its equivalent form where 12 is the denominator okay so in our first fraction I'm going to work out this step here on the actual question and not to the side like I did in the previous steps. So 3 times 4 is 12. So 4 is multiplied to everything within our bracket. So 4 times 30 will equal to 120. And we're keeping that denominator of 9. 4 times 1 will equal to plus 4. So for the second number, we know that 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So again, everything in our brackets is multiplied to 3 and we're distributing the minus sign or the negative sign again with this so negative 3 times 25 would equal to negative 75 ninths negative 3 times 2 would equal to plus 6 and then for our last term and again we know that 4 times 3 is 12 so 5 times 3 will equal to 15. So now we're done with our first denominator. So we're writing everything back. I notice I haven't simplified anything else or reduced my numerators and denominators because I still have a denominator of 9. I'm leaving everything as is. Because at this point now, we're going to be finding our LCD again. I know that's crazy, right? But we still have another fraction involved. And we know that when we're working up with fractions, we have to make sure that everything is the same in order to work them out. 
okay yes yeah, so we're going to be finding our lcd again however after i find the lcd i'm going to go back to the step again and also show you another way that you could also approach this question so i guess whichever step would be better for you but remember that whenever we are solving this equation our main goal is to make sure that whatever we have on the left hand side is equal to what we have on the right hand side I remember that I always tell you that when working on these types of question, there is no one cut method that you can use to check your answer because we could have applied a whole different step right here where I could have worked out my fractions individually and then came back and worked them out everything and simplified everything together. So there is there is no one way that you could have worked out this part of your check. So I don't want you to feel that my method is my way or it's my way or the highway or there's no other method that you can use there are different ways to approach this check portion of your answer you could work out your fraction separately or you could have just worked out the numerator and then dealt with the denominator like i said there's no one method to check your answer so feel free to practice venture off onto the rail Maybe I will upload another video where I actually work out this question where I dealt with each fraction individually so that you can have a better idea as a, another method to check your answer. So I will probably do that for you so that you can see another way that you could check your answer other than finding two LCDs. So I'll do that for you and then again. Remember that with fractions, there are so many ways that you can approach these questions. That's one of the crazy things that I love about fractions. As long as you abide by the rules that fractions have, there are so many ways that you can venture off and check your answers. So let's continue. Okay, so I'm going to find my LCD for this portion. And we know that the LCD for our denominators is going to be 9. So we're changing everything to a denominator of 9. So because 120 already have a denominator, I'm going to put my 120 back. Now 4 has a denominator of 1, which means that my 4 will have to be multiplied to 9. And we know that 4 times 9 will equal to 36. 75 already has a denominator of 9, so we're just returning that back to our question. And 6 like 4 has a denominator of 1, so this has to be multiplied to 9 which will equal to 54 and again my 15 also has a denominator of 1 so this will be multiplied to 9 which will equal to 135 okay so now that we have everything the same let's begin checking our answer okay so I'm going to be doing all of my rough work in the corner all my rough work in the corner so you'll have to follow along with me as I go through okay so let's start with our 120 plus 36 this will equal to 156 and then we're going to take that 156 and minus 75 remember that you don't have to go through all this some of you probably may be using a calculator hey if you're allowed to use a calculator use the calculator but it's still good to put in some brain power and still do things manually from time to time it helps to keep the brain fresh it helps to keep you you know on your p's and q's basically so we see that when all of this good stuff works out it's equal to 135 which is equal to 135 which means that this is correct and our answer of 5 ninth is correct for i now i'm going to piggyback remember i said that at this step right here i'm going to show you an alternative method that you could have also used so if you didn't want to have to go through finding an LCD again, that is no problem. Here is one other thing that you could have done. You could have simply taken your 129 and minus your 75 ninth because both of them are fractions. Both of them already have a denominator of 9. And we know that when I add 6 plus 4, 6 plus 4 is going to equal to 10. So what I'm going to do with that 10 is now I'm going to move that to the other side of the equation where 15 is and I'll minus that 10 from 15 now when my 120 minus my 75 and remember like I said when it comes to these questions there is no one method so once you are good in your fraction area you can 
venture off the rail sometime and just try out these different methods it doesn't kill you if you get the word what's the worst that could actually happen you get it wrong and if you get it wrong you just learn from your mistakes correct it and try it again there's nothing wrong with getting it wrong that's all a part of the learning process so 45 divided by 9 is equal to 5 and 5 is equal to 5 so again you see that we got 135 here we got 5 here but overall both sides of the questions were still equal to the exact same thing which is why i say that when it comes to these questions you don't have to feel pressured that you know you have to work it out the exact same way that you were taught once you know your rules for fractions and you apply those rules and work out the question you will still be able to solve these types of questions so don't feel confined to just follow one method that you may be taught if you're comfortable with that method by all means stick within your comfort zone but still don't get too comfortable that you're not that you're too scared to try something new so like i said you can find the two lcd that's all good and dandy we still got our answer or you could just move all of your constants to one side of the question and work out all the fractions on the next side and then work to see if the two sides still equal to the same answer so we have two questions that i ended two different ways we got two different answers, but both answers were still equal to the exact same thing. So do not be afraid to try a new method or approach. Learning is fun and it's supposed to be exciting. That's one of the things that I love about math. Okay, so I hope this was very helpful to you. Remember that I am going to load the next video, this exact same question. And I'm going to perform the check a little bit different than what we did today so that you can see an alternative method to working out these types of questions. And remember to stay tuned and when you're ready to learn a new skill, remember to return back to Jules Math Tools where we make math easy.